Ugh. Ow. Hello, 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 everyone. This is Junior here, and welcome back to my vampire girlfriend. Like I said in my video, I'm back with a bunch of exclamation points. I'm gonna do this. Let's hop back into it, shall we? Let's put these up here. And if I'm if I'm offending you with my accents, please don't be offended. I'm doing it for fun, and I know I'm not I'm not making fun of uh, I'm not making fun of you guys like with your accents. I, Honestly, I honestly think I should just stop, but let's do it. Resume. After that, we didn't talk much, but was in a similar state of mind, which responded, which represented an idea of pretend none of this happened as it is awkward. Oh, I remember what happened now. Yeah, male parts touching. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. It is, as it is awkward to explain. The Sunday of that week, so I came as she told me to. The venue was a couple of stations away from our town. I went to the entrance of the venue and saw the sign that showed the competition was being held. There is no mistake, this is the place. But I feel like I don't belong here. I don't want to brag, but I have never been inside a place like this in my life. It was only natural I didn't belong. There were only a few people around me. It must be because it it isn't an idol's concert and not many people come to their come to these things the only people that come here are people who have a relation with music people who are related to the participant or people who are friends of the participants like me i fearfully entered the venue as i had already checked with ray there was no entrance fee and i was able to get in without anybody stopping me I guess I was right to come in the school uniform, just in case. There were a lot of people dressed formally as I came to the audience seat. And maybe the family members of the participant, a several couple of men and women around my parents' age, sitting beside each other, stood out. Because there was space in the seating, I decided to randomly select a seat six rows from the right. From the front. There's still time. I checked the time on my watch and saw there was still plenty of time. I suddenly remembered something and took out the smart took out the smartphone and opened the message app. I select Ray, who I had added approximately a month ago, and started typing a message. I write, I'm here, can I see you before before you perform? A reply came moments later. I can't because I have to get my sister's spirit in me. I thought to myself, what does it mean to get sister's spirit in me? Are you black magic user? Is your sister dead? I'll have time, I'll, so I'll come see you. Are you waiting? Are you at the waiting room? I am at the waiting room, but no. I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> I ignore the message. I decided to find the waiting room. After a while, I found a room with a sign that said waiting room, so I peeked in. There was a couple of participants in the room. I saw Ray further into the large room with a surprised look on her face. Ray quickly came my way. I tried to greet her, but quickly get dragged outside the room. I told you not to come. I thought it'd be fun if I did. It's not fun. My turn is right away. I won't be able to be my sister if I have a conversation like we do at the rooftop. And if I can't pretend to be my sister, I'll probably make a mistake. There was a, there was a sadness in Ray's expression. If she can't pretend to be her sister, she's going to make a mistake. She can't do anything alone. It sounds like a joke, but I understand from all the conversations we had. She was serious about it. She can't do it when she's herself. She can succeed because she copies her sister. Ray had living believe, oh, lived believing that and also had done so. Ray, about this competition, is it one that you need to get a good result no matter what? Also, since I found out about Ray's briefs, oh, briefs, beliefs, briefs, <laughs> my mind jumbled up, don't, don't ask, Ray's beliefs, I was thinking about her way of life. I was scared of breaking her, so I couldn't say it, but there was something that I had wanted to say. It's not, but I don't want to make a mistake. Then I want, then I want you to hear me out once. I think I had a serious look more than I thought. Ray looked at my face in silence. She didn't say anything further and was ready to listen to me. Today, I didn't come here to see your sister. 
What? I came here to see Rei Kumagaya, the Rei that's always clumsy and airheaded. I came to see the one that dislikes doing things in front of a large audience. Play the piano with her fullest ability. Quiet. So please, stop copying your sister and try to play as the real you. I don't make a mistake for sure if I be my real self. You won't make a mistake. Make a mistake, I purposely oppose those words. Ray looked at me in surprise. If it's possible, I wanted to get rid of her negative image of herself. Ray's fun as she is. She is delightful as she is. It's a waste to live sealing herself away. Sorry, I'm scratching my neck. And all oh, my sunburns are itchy. Well, not my sunburns, my skin falling off my sunburns are itchy. The Ray I found by chance at the rooftop was lovely. And I didn't want to think that she's losing to her sister that I never met. It's okay. You'll be able to do it. Think about it. You're the one who's copying your sister. If you can do it copying your sister, then you should be able to do it as you. I finished saying what I wanted to and waited for Ray's response. Ray was thinking as she put her two index fingers together, then said while raising her head, You're always teasing me, but at times like this, you're serious. There are things that are hard to say normally. Uh, this loose skin like falling off my arm is making me itchy. I don't say it directly, but I like you when you're on, when you're at the rooftop. Ow, my neck, I just whiplash. I was like, <coughs> piece of hair. Thought I had a bug on me, yuck. That's why I go every day. So watching you deny yourself doesn't feel good for me. Oh God, I almost dropped my phone. Oh no, I was reading that. I was reading that. No, go back. So watching you deny yourself doesn't feel good for me. Oh, when I say like, I mean as a friend. After I told her my feelings, I quickly added a clarification in Ray's case. If I don't add a clarification, she tends to misunderstand things. Even now, the subject made it possible that she misunderstands something. So I was desperate to clear things up. Oh, ha <laughs> ha. You don't need to be that desperate. I already know it's the same as last time. I would have, I would be happier if you didn't add as a friend. You always say things like as a friend or I'm not confessing to you. Ray said, as she seemed a little upset, it troubles me that she's upset, of course. Oh, by the way, Canada. I'm wearing Canada shirt. That's why it's red and white, so. Of course, she would feel proud of herself if a boy said I like you or confessed their love towards her. She might even feel happy. But I am the one that would... I am the one to one to bin the bun. <laughs> I don't know what the lyrics are. But I am the one that would be rejected if she thinks it is a confession. I would be sad to be rejected. When you unintentionally confess to someone, that's why I want to add a clarification. Until right before she went back into the waiting room, Ray wasn't able to make a decision. But right before she went back in, she turned around and looked at me. She looked at me slightly weak, but there was a smile on her face. Yeah, I understand what you're trying to tell me, Junior. I'll try my, as myself today. But in return, if you, if it doesn't go well, please comfort me tomorrow, not teasing me, but nicely. I promise. Okay, I'll do it. Um. Hmm? Huh? Please watch me. Yep. Ray said that and went back into the waiting room. Yay! We're about to watch her! Yay! <laughs> Number nine. Sassara Sassara. What? Uh. Wait. Sassahara Sassara. What the hell? The sound of the audience filled up the arena. The participants whose name was called walks towards the grand piano. I think that Sasahara Sahara is a unique name. I remember Ray had told me on the rooftop her friend's name was Sasa Sasara, that who Ray was talking about. Nice black hair, tall, tall nose, and wide eyes. Her looks were very nice uh, and on the same level as Ray, but she seemed very mature and cold. Sazahara's performance started, but I don't know anything about her. the performance. I can kind of tell that she is good. There was nothing that pulled me in and her performance has ended at that. Number one, Ray Kamagaya. Yay! 
The time has come! I get ready from the side of the stage. From the side of the stage, girl wearing pink dress comes out. It was Ray. Or Rai, Ray. I don't know. I'm just gonna call her Ray. It was obvious she was a little... She was brittle in every move she made. It seems she was she had she was swallowed by the venue's atmosphere. It it wasn't Ray in class. It was Ray at the rooftop. She somehow got to the piano and bowed to the audience. When Ray raised her head, I felt as if she made eye contact. I stared at Ray and said in my heart, "You can do it, Ray." Suddenly, Ray's mouth moved. Her mouth moved. I didn't know what she said. But to me, it seemed as if she said, thank you. Although at first she had made me nervous as well as she sat in front of the piano, she had calmly, she calmed down. Uh, she had played dynamic classic melody, probably without making uh, any mistake. It was a soft melody with some speed of momentum and some depth to it. There was a little, there was, <laughs> There were different images within one song. Ray had a wide variety of expressions as she performed. Ray looked lively, even from the, a beginner's point of view. Maybe it was from her body movement or the way she firmly hit the keys. It was something that couldn't be seen from Sasara's performance. I cannot say that name. I'm gonna call her Sarah, okay? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna call her Sarah, because Sasara. You know, and her performance had ended. There was no big mistakes that Ray was so worried about. I clapped with all my power to show respect to Ray bravely fighting. I felt kind of happy. It came to the waiting room to see Ray who had finished performing. But Ray wasn't at the waiting room. Maybe she went to the washroom again. I was thinking about something that Ray would be angry if she found out as I wandered around trying to find her. I saw a pink dress much like one Ray was wearing by chance. It seemed she went left at the end of the hallway. I followed the person wearing the pink dress who may be Ray to the back of the building. The person who was wearing the dress had headed to a straight hallway. It's not gonna be here, isn't it? At the end of the hallway, there was a door and the door had led to the staircase going downward. It seems that the stairs led to the underground parking lot. If it is Ray, I wonder what she's doing here. It's not Ray, isn't it? I followed her as I wondered, and I got to an open area of a parking lot. The woman's high-pitched voice echoed in the parking lot. It wasn't once or twice. It was hard to tell what was being said, but in the strong tone, it seemed to be an argument. But an argument, there was only one person's voice. It was maybe more than one uh, more of a side sided confrontation confrontation than an argument i went to go find out where the voice was coming from and noticed that the person wearing pink dress was ray and the other person was someone i remember seeing long black hair wide eyes the person who was glaring at ray was cesara who was supposedly ray's friend before i can approach them cesara had resorted to violence. What? As Ray tried to run away, Cesara pursued her as she jumped into the air with unbelievable power and landed on the low ceiling of the parking lot as if it was a new ground and kicked off the ceiling and landed on in front of Ray. What is that? That movement? Vampire! <laughs> it was beyond the human power. There was cold sensation on the back of my spine. That's weird. That's not normal. That's something that shouldn't exist here. That's almost... Sasara laughed because there was some distance. I couldn't accurately tell, but it seemed her canine teeth shined like it was wet. Almost a vampire. Vampire! I just said that. Ray had fell back and couldn't move as if, as she had moved in front of Ray suddenly in an unexpected way. The vampire closed the distance instantly towards Ray and moved her head, her canine teeth towards Ray's neck. My instincts sent out a warning. That's not good. That's something I can't fight. That's a predator to us. I started running immediately. 
No back, but forwards. Not back, but forwards. Not running away, but running towards. It wasn't whether I would win or lose. Ray's life was in danger, and I was in a place where I might be able to save her. Then the choice is obvious. If I run now, I would regret it for the rest of my life. The vampire had seemed to notice me. It may be that it gave up on sucking Ray's blood or changed its mind. The vampire lifted Ray with one hand by the neck. It was a frightful strength. Ray looked to be in pain as she was being choked in midair. There was no time to be scared. I headed right for the monster. The vampire slowly swung an arm, swung the arm it had lifted Ray with. Ray's body flew towards me. It had thrown Ray at me. I tried to catch Ray, but wasn't able to stand the force. I was hit with Ray, used as a weapon, and flew back several meters. It must have hit my head when I fell to the ground. I only had a, a faint consciousness. I looked for Ray as I was in a state I could lose consciousness. In any moment, I thought strongly that I had to protect Ray. I found Ray. Ray was passed out a couple of steps away. I walked with weak footsteps towards Ray as I thought strongly about going to the rooftop with her again. I thought strongly about being at the rooftop, saying jokes and eating our lunches, thinking I can't die in a stupid way like this. As I thought, I finally got to Ray. My consciousness that was already close to its limit had gone black as the, a candle flame being blown out. Ooh! I like this. Next one. Episode 7. That was episode 6? I thought it was episode 5. What? After fourth class ends, lunchtime comes along. I took out my lunch, which my mother had made me every day from the bag without standing up and get ready to eat. After what had happened, I stopped going to the rooftop. The reason was because even if I did go, there was no one to eat with. There was no changes as usual inside the lunchbox. I didn't think much of it, grabbed my chopsticks and started to lunch alone. I grabbed the meatloaf that was cut into small bite size by, by chopsticks and brought it to my mouth. I used to like meatloaf when I was younger. The pre-made meatloaf is in my lunch almost every day. My mother probably doesn't know how, no, no too much of me since I got older. What I'm thinking, what I like, and what's troubling me right now, she probably doesn't know or even care who I have been eating my lunch with at, with the past several months and how I feel getting that taken away. That goes for my father as well. Junior, I looked up at the familiar voice, it was eerie. Then I remember, even if my mother and father don't have interest in me, there's the benevolent person who always watches me. Let's eat lunch together. It looks like she was thinking about my feelings as her tone was kind of, was kind, although I don't have much memories of it. It was like a, a mother worried about her son. I don't stand a chance. I was pretending to act like usual, but Yuri saw right through it. I nodded at Yuri. I moved my lunchbox to the side to make space. Yuri put her lunchbox on the open space. Thank you for the food, she said as she put her hands together. Yuri looked at me as if she wanted me to say it as well. I had already started eating, but decided to follow her lead. Thank you for the food. There we go. Good job. Yuri nodded as she seemed satisfied and then play picked away at her lunch box with her chopsticks. It's been a while since I ate lunch with Yuri. Hey, Yuri. Yeah? You're kind of like a mom. Mom? Does that mean I seem old? No. Isn't it rude to be telling a high school girl that? It's bad mouthing. No, no, how do I say it? When I'm feeling a little down, you notice it and stay close to me. You've always been like that, Yuri. Oh, am I being praised right now? I am praising you. Whoa, what is this? There's a tickling feeling when you praise me when we're face to face. It's a weird sensation. Praise me more. Oh, God, is she getting what I think she is? You're a good girl. You're nice to everyone and you try hard for everything. That's not what I wanted. I feel like you're treating me like a child. I'm usually the type to scold someone when I'm not used to praising people. 
I do better if you praise me. If wait, I do better if you praise me. I've grown up this much being praised. If your height grew, I think it would be good for basketball. Yeah. So help me grow, then I'll get the rebound under the hoop. We spoke about nothing for a while. After we both got relaxed, the topic changed to about Ray. I'm worried about Ray. I looked away as Yuri looked at Ray's desk for the past several weeks. Ray's desk has been empty. Yeah. On the day of the piano competition, I had ran into a real vampire. The vampire that had taken the form of a girl that was the same age as us led Ray to the underground parking lot to feast on her. I, who had tried to stop her, had failed. Ray and I were both taken to the hospital. From the myth vampires suck all the blood of living things and kill them, I wonder why the vampires didn't take our lives. I couldn't understand. According to the news, the vampire was cornered and ended up taking her own life. In the end, we both luckily ended up living. I didn't have any major injuries. Ray had injuries, but were only scratches and bruises. I had returned to school in less than a week, but Ray had not returned to school yet. From what I heard a while ago, her injury should be healed already. Are you okay, Junior? What? Aren't you scared being attacked by a vampire? They look like humans, right? It's possible I, c I could be a vampire too. She asked in a serious tone what Yuri, Yuri was saying was true. I... I'm gonna answer her question seriously. I am scared. Of course I'm scared. There is a possibility that that inhuman thing is lurking around pretending to be a human. It would be weird if I wasn't scared. Then, yeah, that's why. I'm more worried about Ray. Me and the girl that was a vampire didn't know each other. Although I already thought that she was a pretty girl when I watched her perform the piano, I didn't have any connection with her in the first place. I wasn't surprised when I found out she was a vampire, but Ray probably knew her, how that girl, Sasara, talked what she likes and dislikes. She may have known, she may have even known who she likes and what her future dreams were. Cesaro was Ray's friend. Her friend was a vampire who had attacked her. Her experience must have been different than mine. I was thinking my worry of not knowing where a vampire is isn't a big deal. What? Well, think about it. How is not knowing where a vampire is and not knowing where a, where a murder is any different? There is nothing different. Not knowing where someone dangerous is is a worry that everyone has. That might be true, but... But I wouldn't think that you are possibly a vampire. I look Yuri straight in the face as I said that. But I noticed that it wasn't what I wanted to say. And I shook my head and restarted. No, actually, in reality, it's not that I don't believe there is a 1% chance that you aren't a vampire. So indecisive. Because it's not like I know everything about you. Oh, that's true. There are something I want to have secret as well. I wonder what she had imagined when I, when she said keep a secret. Eerie's face went lightly red. I think she likes me. For example, there's no way I wouldn't I would know what kind of what kind of porn magazines you hide under your bed. I don't have any porn magazines. You saying that probably means that you're hiding a porn magazine under your bed. Yuri quickly responded to me. I laughed out loud. Of course I'm hiding it. I'm a guy. Are you really hiding it under the bed? I'm going to throw it away. <laughs> Wait, that's so hasty. Under the bed is an example. I need porn magazines. You don't need them. Get a girlfriend, you douche. Okay, then. Why don't you stop hiding it? It's worse because you're hiding it. Is that really okay? My mom's going to be filled with m mature porn magazines. It's a mid-aged woman. It's mid-aged woman. You're going to have to look at old women from now on. I don't want that. Wait a second. You're into those things? It's an example. I like... I don't know what SM stuff is. I don't want that either. Look at something more normal.
soft. It's fine. It's soft SM. I don't know what that is. Someone tell me down below what SM is or if you don't get demonetized like me. I hope I don't get demonetized, but this is a game. Leave me alone. I don't get what's soft and how it can be soft. But everything is a lie. I'll keep my true preference a secret forever. Forever, huh? Yuri looked a little sad and a little regretful. Maybe she wanted me to tell her, even if she wanted me to tell her, I wouldn't. We got off track quite a bit. I bring the story on track and continue talking. So, what I'm trying to say is, if you try to keep something a secret to the other, it's possible for you and I both. So, I don't know what secrets you're keeping from me. Although, I can't say you're not a vampire. There is one thing I can say. I can tell you you're not hiding anything from me in order... To cause me harm. Even if you are a vamp if you were a vampire, you wouldn't try to kill me for no reason. There is no way you would try to kill me. Try and kill me. Oh. Of course I have no evidence, but I do believe that and I think everyone unconsciously believe that even if they don't say it aloud. There is a possibility that the friend in front of me is a vampire. They could be s bad person under the s s soy Societal morals But they were they are friends, so there is no way they will try and hurt me Is that belief too ideal? I think you're not wrong. I think you're right. I think your belief is fine like that I, I remember saying brief earlier her briefs <laughs> Sorry, I mean after a couple of seconds of thinking, Yuri smiled softly. She supported my thought that I had looked over since the incident. She had a soft smile that I have rarely seen. Thank you for thank you for believing. I was a little embarrassed as she said it. It was uh, it so directly. I looked away and changed the topic. In Ray's case, maybe she isn't able to think like that because someone who she thought was her friend had attacked her. That's why she isn't able to come to class. That's what I think. Yeah. We had complicated... We had a complicated thought as we looked towards Ray's empty desk. Then Yuri had looked at me as if she remembered something. Oh yeah, if you're worried about Ray Jr., do you want to go check on her? For someone... For some reason, Yuri had her hands on her as if she was saying, How's that? To be honest, the teacher told me this morning he wanted me to give her the papers handed out in class that to Ray. She was acting proud of herself as the teacher had trusted her asking her to do that. But I can't skip my extracurricular activity after school, so if you can go for me, that'll help me a lot, Junior. Can I ask you to do it? Yuri looked into my eyes and I tilted and tilted her head. There's no reason to turn it down. It was actually a good opportunity for me. I wanted to know how Ray was doing as well. Accepted her offer and decided to go to Ray's house after school. After class ended, I grabbed Ray's handouts from class and handed Ray's... Uh, I grabbed Ray's handouts from class and headed to Ray's house. And I asked from the teacher. The address was in a high-class high residential area around 15 minutes away from where Yuri and I lived. It was known for having only rich people living there. I walked the streets. I walked the street that I wasn't used to as I looked at the expensive looking houses. When I got to the address given to me, there was a fancy western. It was a fancy western house. There was a large gate and inside the gate was a western yard with a uh, with natural grass. Whoa. My voice came out unconsciously as I saw the western house that was like a painting. So Ray was a rich high class girl. I recall Ray's looks that were different from our world and her elegance and understood where it came from. Ray was born and grew up here. I stood in front of the gate a little scared beside the house. There was a buzzer that, I could, that can be anywhere, be seen anywhere. I found the courage to press the buzzer. I heard the buzzer ring. Even at a rich house, the ring was the same as a normal house. It was the first time I found 
I found that out. After a bit, there was a voice that answered the buzzer. It was a woman. Hi. Hello, I'm Junior. I'm in the same class as Ray. I'm here to drop off the handouts from class. From there, everything went smoothly. I noticed in first sight that the woman that came out was her mother, so looked a lot like Ray. She greeted with, with me with pleasure. As, as I was giving her the handouts, I told her that I was wondering how Ray was and was worried about her. Ray's mother invited me in. I was invited into the living room where there were silver dishes that seemed to be antiques which I wasn't sure if they were used and in front of me were two women. I'm Ray's mom. Thank you for coming today for Ray. One of them was a lady who let me in in the same... It is the same with Ray, but she had nice blonde hair. And if it wasn't... If it isn't dyed, then there must have been Western blood in them. But her tone was gentle and slow. It was much like Ray at the rooftop, more than Ray in class. Hey, mother. Ray's sister! Ooh. Yes, loud. Yes, Louis. Oh, Louis. Hold the secret till later. Right now, we have a, visit, a guest over. You have your slippers mixed up. Oh. You're so naturally airheaded. Oh, I'm Ray's sister, Louie. Nice to meet you. For the other person I could have guessed before she introduced herself. I'm gonna go soon. I'm almost at the 32 minute mark. Her height was around the same as mine and had very skinny arms and legs. She had a perfect body for a woman. It was like a model. She had feminine attractiveness, but also had a clean and aesthetic body line. Each of the body parts were similar to Ray, but compared to her sister, Ray had rounder body line, face, and gesture, making her more feminine. This is a perfect sister, huh? Louie, who Ray had called a perfect woman and uh, had copied her, was right in front of me. Compared to her, the sister, Ray's mother was like Ray and had her airheaded moments. The way she puts on different slippers in the hallway and comes back and laughs embarrassed makes her younger than she actually is which is very similar to ray you're a junior i've heard a lot about you from ray is that so i wonder what ray has told them it was a bit awkward but i decided to tell her what i know as well same as me ray has told me a lot about you so i thought that this is perfect person ray talks about she told you that so stupid. Ray's sister sighed, sounding a little unintrigued and a little troubled. Do you not like it being talked like that? As a sister, I'm happy that she looks up to me. Okay, I'm gonna go because this is a lot of reading and I'm at the 33 minute mark. Thank you all for watching. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you want more things like games, reaction videos, vlogs, challenges, and PlayStation 4 videos. Hit the subscribe button. Make sure it is gray, not red, because if it's red, you're missing out on my content. And how you know you subscribe is you see a big bell icon. Hit that bell icon like Ray when she nailed the competition, and you'll get notified when I upload. And I will see you dudes and duders in the next video. Or Ray Ward. Doo -doo.